How do you make LEGO Technics Switch accessible? Let's find out. Hey internet, I'm that guy bud. Today we're gonna make a couple switch interfaces for the LEGO Technic system. I'm a huge fan of LEGOs and I can remember being a kid and seeing a motorized LEGO carousel and being fascinated by it. Nowadays, I always look at the great ball contraption videos when they show up on YouTube. I'll link to a couple of my favorites. These were instances where I got pleasure just from enjoying visuals created with LEGOs. It got me thinking that there may be some LEGO fans out there who know some people with a disability that keep them from being able to build with LEGOs, but would still enjoy the mechanizations and the the same way that I do. So today we're going to build two different switch accessible LEGO interfaces. One of them is based on the LEGO Power Functions control switch and the other based on the LEGO Power Functions battery box. Both of the parts I'll be modifying are available in the basic LEGO Power Functions motor set which goes for about $30. Both of the interfaces we'll be building today allow us to add a switch to activate the motors in one direction as assigned by the battery box. These modifications will void your warranty and if not done correctly can damage your equipment and possibly yourself. Do this at your own risk, I'm not responsible for your actions. That being said, let's do this. The tools we'll be using for this first project are a soldering iron, a small flathead screwdriver, cable cutters, wire strippers, and a spudger. You're going to need about three inches of wire, electrical tape, solder, and an audio jack. I would suggest two in case you mess one up. Okay, this is the full kit. We're going to mod just the switch first, so let's get rid of all the other stuff. The first thing we're going to do is get this switch open. The best way to do that is to get a small screwdriver in these slots to release the tabs holding this thing together. While you're doing that, get a spudger in there to gently put some pressure to keep it from closing up. After you've done that for three tabs on one side, gently open the switch. Be careful when pulling it apart. There's four small electrical leads that go up through the light gray Lego brick. These are delicate and will be damaged if you pull on them. Let's take a look at the circuit board. The way this switch normally works is that these two pairs of contacts would be connected to make the motor go in one direction, and these two pairs would be connected to go in the opposite direction. Today we only have space inside the switch to make one direction work. So the plan is to make a permanent connection between these two contacts, then we'll add our new switch between these two contacts. First I'll add some solder to the pads on this circuit board to make it easier for us to add the jumper wire. Now I'm going to take a length of wire and lay it across these connections. Solder it down and cut it off. Now I'm going to reinforce that connection and finally cut off the excess so it'll fit inside the case. Now I'm going to add solder to the pads on the other side. I'm going to solder wires down that we can connect to an audio jack that we can plug a switch into. I left the cables a bit long so that they're easier to manipulate. Now that they're connected, I'm going to trim them down, strip them, curl them a bit so that they line up with the audio jack, and finally solder them to the jack. I'm going to trim off this extra contact just to get it out of the way. Now I'm going to gently rotate the audio jack so that the jack points out of the side of the Lego block. I'm going to cover the open spot on the other side of the jack with some electrical tape and gently tuck those contacts closer to the jack. This is going to make it look a lot cleaner and be safer when we put the housing back together. We're going to slide our new assembly back into the housing being very careful that we don't force any of the connector pins. If we bust one of those, this whole thing was for nothing. Slowly work everything back into place. You may need to move the jack around to make everything properly line up. Then reconnect the bottom. Try to do this evenly on both sides. Trying to get one side on first really doesn't work. They really want to be even. Make sure tape isn't getting in the way. You may need to use a small screwdriver or something pokey to get the tape out of the way of the clip. I added a nut onto the outside of the audio jack to make everything solid. So let's plug in a switch and try it. Works great. And that's all there is to it. If you don't have one of these switches, that's okay. Next we're going to modify a battery box. I tried in another project to add a battery interrupter to this box, but honestly the case is so tight it really didn't work well. The hardest part of this mod was figuring out where everything was going to go, but I have a solution for you. For this mod you'll need a soldering iron, Phillips head screwdriver, spudger or small flathead screwdriver, an awl or drill to make a small hole, a glue gun, wire cutters and wire strippers. For parts I'm using some solder and half of a mono extension cable from Radio Shack from which I've cut off a foot from the side with the jack. We can save the rest to make our own switch. See our other videos on how to make your own adaptive switches. So let's open this up. We first need to take out the two screws, one on each side of the box. Once those are out, 
Put a spudger or small flathead screwdriver in the bottom to release the tabs holding it together and then slide it apart. These are the connections that the switch uses to turn the power on and off. Just be careful with them when opening and closing the box. There isn't going to be much room in the case up here and the batteries fill up all of the space here and here. So we're gonna focus our efforts on this spot. Let's make a small hole near this battery connector into this open area. It only needs to be big enough to pass the cable through. We're going to strip off a couple inches of insulation. Our goal is to have our new inner wire replace the original red wire entirely. Separate the inner wire from the shielding and twist the shielding and cut it off leaving about a half an inch to work with. To get at the spot we need to solder, first gently flip up this connector brick, then the PCB will pivot out. Be careful not to put strain on the black wire, you don't want to dislodge it. I'm going to heat up the solder near the red wire to release it, and although I'm using a solder sucker, it's not mandatory. If your red cable is still connected to the battery connector, do the same thing there and remove the wire entirely. Strip the tip of the wire we're going to replace it with, and tin the end of the wire. Connect it to where we just removed the red wire from. Now gently slide the PCB back into the slot we removed it from and fit the connector brick back in its place. Now we're gonna solder up the other wire. Get the case on its side and solder the other wire to the battery connector right next to the hole we made. Don't forget to snip off any excess that there may be. The wire we're using is thicker than the original, so snip off the three little tabs running along the inside of the case to make room for it. Then line up our new cable in that groove. The outer casing also has a part that will go through that groove, so be aware of that. Then slide the outer shell back on slowly and carefully. Be aware of the cable along the side, the switch at the top, and the connector brick. Do not rush and do not force it. But if something feels like it's jammed and isn't moving, just slowly take it off and try again. Once it's clipped together, it's time to put those screws back in. Now let's add some glue so that the cable doesn't get pulled out. Make sure you don't add too much glue. There will be a battery cover going on over this. If you added too much, wait for it to cool and trim off any excess. If you put in enough glue, it really should take a beating. Make sure you cut a notch in the battery cover to let the cable out. Then plug in a switch and let's try it out. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll be putting the first example up for sale in my store and there's a link to it in the description. If there's something you want to see us mod or if there's questions about this video or suggestions for future ones, you can reach me in the comments below or on Twitter at that guy bud. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.